Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an example of using the event macro. So we know the event macro allows us to create a change. It's a changer macro within Harlow 3.3 based on some condition. As we saw when we worked with the if macro, we can show one code or run one section of code or some other code based on some condition. Greater than, less than, equal to, and other things. When it comes to the event macro, we're interested in time. When something happens, the moment it happens, respond in some way. However, we also saw with the event macro and with the when keyword that it only applies once. That is, by itself, it only applies once. Let's look at how we can combine the event macro with other macros we now know to create a much more complex pattern and a much more useful pattern for certain use cases within Twine working within Harlow. So let's look at something that's pretty common. Let's say you're accepting some type of input from a user or player. You're having them enter their name, enter a password, or something like that. Now, potentially, they could enter anything from no input at all to complex or potentially even offensive input. Usually, you want some way to filter that. You want to respond to their input in some way. You might, once they've entered a password, go to another passage. Or you might, if they've entered something offensive, take it out or otherwise filter it. I'm particularly interested in that second category of things. How might we react using the event macro to things that are put into the input macro? So remember when we use the input macro, we bind or to bind to some existing variable. This means that when the data changes in the input macro, it also changes in the variable at the same time. Using this knowledge, we can combine this with the event macro. So what's going to happen is a user or player is going to ins insert something, type something in the input macro. As they do that, if there's ever a moment when the input matches something that the event macro was looking for, it's going to respond. In this particular example, I am setting a temporary variable to right here, just an empty string. So open and closing quotation marks here with nothing in it. Then I'm saying, okay, to bind to the variable. So remember, it's going to update here as we type things in the input macro, and it's going to update the variable simultaneously. It binds twice to bind. And in this case, I'm saying when the temporary variable name, which is again, to binded to input macro up here, if it's ever Dan with a capital D, then do two things immediately. Immediately set the temporary variable to an empty string, which it started with, and display another passage called repeat. Now remember the display macro includes the contents of one passage and another. So we're saying go grab the contents of the repeat passage and put it right here. So this event's going to run one time and then it's going to display something. It's going to display repeat. Well, what does repeat have? Repeat has the same thing it just had. Repeat says, hey, the contents of this passage is the event when the temporary variable Dan or temporary variable name is is Dan set name to empty string and display repeat, which is currently what we're looking at. Repeat. So this has the effect of any time the word Dan appears with a capital D, the variable will be reset back to its initial value right here, initial and and the passage repeat will be shown, which resets the event. In other words, we're creating an infinite series of events. So anytime the first event happens, it's replaced with the next event, which replaces itself with the next event, which replaces itself with the next event. Or we can keep on reacting to the same event instead of just reacting one time. Let me show you what this looks like in practice. So if we build and play, right here I have name. If I enter something like Fred, nothing happens. But if I enter D A N. Well, what just happened? We just saw the event run, and because it's bound twice to bound, both what was typed in the input macro and the variable changed at the same time. The win, the win uh, keyword as part of the event macro triggered, and it reset the variable. Because the variable was tied to the input macro, it also got changed, and the event got reset. 
And so this got run over here. So let's do it again. D A N reset. But if I'm very clever, D D D A N, it's not the same. There's a more complex way to do more advanced filtering, but at least in this case, you can see how it's done. So this ever becomes Dan by itself, it's immediately erased and reset. Because over here, the event macro is looking for that exact thing right here, this exact thing, capital D, lowercase a, lowercase n. If it ever occurs, change the value of the variable, display repeat, which was what happened the first time, and now not every repeat time repeats being called over and over or being displayed over and over and over and over again, as long as we need it. But this only comes about as a pattern and a potentially useful one for many people as a series of different interconnected concepts we've seen within Harlow. One is getting input from a user as part of the input macro, and it's the use of the to bind keyword. So because we are bound not only to the macro, but also to the variable, as the variable changes as a result of typing within the input macro, then it changes the variable as it goes. At the same time, the event macro down here is checking for when something happens. This is combined with the display macro down here to display the contents of another passage, repeat, which has the same contents of this last line, which is then repeated and repeated and repeated, replacing itself each time over and over and over again. So even though the event macro runs one time, we can, with knowledge of how the display macro works, combine it to replace itself, and replace itself, and replace itself, and keep on running as long as we need. Now, ideally, we would not want it to run infinitely, and we would have some other additional event if we typed in the correct password, or potentially a player or user clicked on some type of link to send them to another passage, just so we're not running it all the time. But it's still a useful pattern, again, combining the event macro with a display macro, and thinking of how binding works between variables and input macros within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.